The Tokina ATX Pro 28 to 70 millimeter with a constant aperture of f2.8 might be the best budget all around lens, especially for video shooters. If you don't mind not really having a constant f2.8. My name is Jared and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and if you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. I first got turned on to this Tokina when I saw this video by Justin Phillip explaining the Tokina's ingenue roots. Ingenue, for those that you don't know, makes some of the best cinema lenses that money can buy. And this is no slouch, especially when it comes to video. I had originally bought this lens to pair it with my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K with the Magic Booster inside. If you don't know what a Magic Booster is, it's essentially a built-in speed booster that brings the crop factor from 1.5 up to 1.18 in the Blackmagic cameras. Effectively changing this lens from a 28 to 70 to more like a 33 to 83. So for an all-around cinema lens, I thought that this would be absolutely perfect. That was until I ordered a Viltrox speed booster for my Fuji X-T4. I couldn't wait to try my cinema lenses, which are the Tokina 28-70, coupled with a lens that I actually prefer over the 28-70, especially now, the 16-28. Couldn't wait to try those lenses on the X-T4 with a crop factor of 1.1, effectively full frame. But once I got the 28-70 on the X-T4, this happened. Just to explain what's happening here, I know the image is blown out, but if you look right here, you can clearly see that as I change from 28 to 70 millimeter, we're getting a little bit of light loss. Now, this doesn't happen on the 16 to 28, so I'm not sure if it's a design flaw with the 28 to 70 or what, but it does advertise as a constant 2.8. It's actually a real bummer because Something like a constant aperture on any lens for filmmakers is incredibly important because when you change your focal length on a zoom lens, you don't want to go into the camera and change all your other settings just to get the same exposure for the shot that you're trying to get. This is just one of those things that slows us down when we're trying to make the thing that we're trying to make. If your budget is narrow and an EF lens is something that you're looking for, that covers a very wide range of focal lengths that you need, I still recommend the lens. If you have a little bit more money, you might want to upgrade to something more like a Canon L-series lens, or maybe just go native for your camera. My Fuji, short of using some cinema lenses, which we'll talk about in a future video, you got to go with the 16-55 to f2.8. But for something like anything that requires you to mount, adapt, speed booster, she's a good lens, even if she's a liar.